So got another tear down here. This is a deep well pump. It just quit working. Uh, so I called the well company and uh, they came and replaced it with a new pump and left this with me. So uh, I figured, heck, I might as well tear it down and, and see what happened. See why it failed. It might be interesting and who knows, maybe I'd get really lucky and be able to fix it. Because uh, the new pump costs $400. This is made by Franklin Electric, three-quarter horsepower. I already got a couple things, some big hose clamps. Those are pretty beefy. Alright, so this is the pump section. And it just has a spline shaft down in there that mates with the output of the motor, which is pretty heavy. I have a feeling I'm going to open this up and find it's full of water. So I just took out three screws. I was thinking those were going to go all the way through, but they don't. And that's wet in there, no surprise. What's running? Impossible. I'm gonna go back to this end. Let's see if this thing will spin. <clears throat> nope. It's that motor seized up. There's a, a little plug here, and this threads it on. There's a seal so that you can make your electrical connections from in the water to inside the pump uh, without any issues with water penetration. That might have been our failure point right there. That seal is cracked. So I'm not sure what that is, but it came out of right there. It's got three electrical contacts on it. Probably a, either, a, I would think it would be a temperature sensor. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna be able to fix this thing with this motor seized up. Hmm, <laughs> there's some water bubbling out. It's actually a pretty heavy gauge piece of stainless steel. High quality stainless steel too. Because this thing sat down in a well since about 1972. I wonder if I can drive this shaft out of here. That at least would be something I could use in a future lathe project. So I took this little thing apart and it is indeed a temperature sensor. There's a little piece of metal right here that is either going to bend up with one temperature, say cold, or that way with hot and make a connection. On the back side, there's two leads right there. So basically it would make those continuous. Now this third lead, I'm a little confused by because it looks like there's a heat sink and a MOSFET. And since this is just hooked to motor windings, I'm not sure how that fits in. Kind of curious about that. Maybe someone can explain that to me. That's a stainless steel hose barb fitting. That would probably cost, I'm betting you at least 10 bucks, maybe even 15 bucks. We're gonna have to cut this thing open. Well, that's kind of a bummer. These were threaded in. There was also a pin. So probably if I had drilled it out, I could have just unthreaded this. 
and then this would be a solid steel tube that I could use for something. But as it is, I could even, I could weld it, I can still use it for sheet, it's still useful. So now we're down to the good part. So this is water in, that's just a, a screen mechanism. Remember the motor was bolted on here, so this would be sealed. So once water goes in here, it's come through these all these little holes, and then it's got access to this area. The motor came up and turned this guy. If you look here, what we've got is an impeller as it turns it's throwing the water outward. The water is in this little housing, so it goes out, hits the edge, and then goes up into the next stage. So it is, it's a multi-stage impeller setup. And I've got a nice hex shaft here I can use for something. Here, if you look at the impeller a little closer, the low pressure side would be here. So it would go in here and it would go through these little, there's a hollow area underneath. So the water gets drawn in there and then it comes out here. As soon as it comes out it's getting thrown tight against the wall, the outer housing, <clears throat> like that. And therefore the pressure is rising. So the water would want to go back down but of course there's a piece in the way so the water can't just come back into this chamber where it started. So now we've got, in this space above the impeller, we've got a high pressure gallery, essentially. And the water would like to escape there. Uh, and it has places to escape right here. And they're directional, too, because of course everything's spinning, so the water's spinning. It's using the inertia of the water spinning around. So if you look at this piece, <clears throat> these little ports here communicate with the center again and just bring the, the spinning water back to the middle to be drawn up by the next stage, the next impeller. So it then goes into these ports and out these ports and it gets pressurized again as this is spinning. And here you can kind of see how it, it can't go back down because even though it's high pressure here, that's going to force this impeller against this and make a seal. So the water would prefer to go up instead of trying to squeeze through that tiny little hole. Uh, and again, as it comes up into this gallery, it's got exit ports. So the path of least resistance is just to go to the next stage each time. And then when it comes out the top, it's however many PSI. Now, usually these pumps aren't pumping to 100 PSI, but they can. Uh, some can go even higher, but, uh, you know, usually these pumps, they charge your well system to, you know, 50, 60 PSI max. So there you go. It's just a multi-stage impeller pumping system. This is our final gallery, so the highest pressure is going into this chamber here, and I cut that off so we can see the bottom of the check valve and how it functions. And then I cut this off so we can see the top of it. So basically the check valve is this rubber seal on top of this plastic piece, and then this plastic piece sandwiches that rubber seal, and it just screws together. This thing had a, a spring on it, like that. And then the seal goes on and then it gets sandwiched there. This is just for support to make it so that the seal doesn't uh, pop off or deflect. And the seal just forms between the rubber piece and this bore right here, which is, uh, it looks like they've polished it to make it smooth. When the pump is on, the higher pressure side is here. This gets pushed up. The seal is moved out of the way and water comes through all these little chambers, all these little holes. So the water's going up through the middle and then out of these holes like this. When the pump turns off, the pressure is going to drop in this chamber and all the, the column of water sitting on top of this is going to push down. That's going to get forced down and it'll make a seal around there and the water's going to push that seal firmly against there. And that, that's all it is. There, there's your check valve. The, the pressure of the water itself is what pushes that seal in position and seals it up. Then when the pump turns on the next time, the pressure is going to build underneath. This is going to get forced up. More water will come through until the pump turns off, and then it shuts off. So what did I get from this teardown? Uh, I got some heavy gauge stainless steel that I can use for future projects. Unfortunately, I'm not going to fool with this. With all this epoxy on there, trying to get that copper out of there is going to be a nightmare. So that'll go to the recycler. 
I got this ten plus dollar stainless steel fitting. Uh, that's something I'll, I'll certainly use in the future. I'm going to keep this rubber seal. I may find a use for that. Various nuts, washers, screws, bolts, uh, these studs. Uh, you know, when you have a metal lathe, something like this, you can always make stuff out of that. Got a nice piece of 5 8 shafting. I got a piece of hex shaft. I got this tube. Had I um, taken more time and kept this as a solid tube, it would have been more useful to me, but, uh, but it's still something I can use. And uh, then the rest of the metal, uh, I will just recycle. So, yeah, I actually got a, got a fair amount of value out of this. Uh, plus, I, I got the knowledge of how the pump works, which uh, is really what I was after.